In this tutorial, I will explain what a sleeve dipole antenna is. Just like a dipole antenna, a sleeve dipole antenna has two elements, as you can see over here. Here is one element, which is a quarter wavelength long, and here is the other element, which is also a quarter wavelength long. Total size is a half wavelength, and this element is a metal tube. One element is attached to the coax cable center conductor, as you can see over here. The other element is this element, which is a metal tube called sleeve, and the coax cable is inside the tube. The sleeve is attached to the coax cable metallic shield, this metallic shield. The sleeve dipole antenna is also known under several other names. For example, vertical sleeve antenna or coaxial sleeve antenna. The sleeve dipole antenna is a balanced antenna, just like an ordinary dipole antenna. The sleeve dipole antenna is fed by a coax cable, as you can see over here, which is an unbalanced feed line. Normally, in such a case, a balen is needed. In this case, however, the sleeve acts as a balen which counter the effects of the current returning back along the outer braid of the coax cable. And here you see a piece of the outer braid of the coax cable. This is the sleeve dipole antenna C as discussed in tutorial 33. Here you see the copper tube. Inside the copper tube there is a coax cable. And the metallic shield of the coax cable is soldered to the copper tube. And this is the copper wire with insulator. This is one element and this is the second element. In case you want to build your own sleeve dipole antenna, here are the dimensions. The copper tube is 66 mm long, the outer diameter is 7 mm and the tube wall thickness is 0.2 mm. The length of the copper wire with insulator is 86 mm. This sleeve dipole antenna is tuned for 868 MHz. The sleeve dipole antenna has the same donut shaped radiation pattern as the normal dipole antenna in free space. As you can see over here, a sleeve dipole antenna has a gain of 2.15 dBi or 0 dBd. This is sleeve dipole antenna C as discussed in tutorial 33 and is attached to the antenna analyzer. This is antenna C measured antenna parameters. The visvoir is 1.1, the impedance is 49 ohms, and the S11 is minus 28 dB. Here you see the corresponding visvoir plot and S11 plot, and the corresponding impedance plot. When buying an antenna, beware, many antennas do not work as advertised. Use an antenna analyzer such as the N1201SA to check the antenna. See tutorial 40. A correctly advertised sleeve dipole antenna should look like this. Foldable omnidirectional antenna with a gain of 2.15 dBi. The standing wave ratio is smaller or equal than 2. The impedance of this antenna is 50 ohms. The polarization type is vertical or horizontal. Housing material is ABS, and the cable connector is RPSMA or SMA. I have seen advertisements calling this antenna a high gain antenna, which is not. I have seen gain values of 3 dBi instead of 2.15 dBi, and sometimes this antenna is called a directional antenna instead of omnidirectional antenna. So please, if you have access to an antenna analyzer, Measure the antenna parameters of your antenna. There are sleeve dipole antennas which are tuned to work for both 868 MHz and 915 MHz. Here is one which is opened. It is antenna B mentioned in tutorial 33. Compared to single frequency tuned sleeve dipole antennas, these two frequencies tuned antennas cost slightly more and they have slightly higher FISWAR values. But the visvoir is still below 2. I have been poking inside antenna B, which caused the visvoir to change to 2.4 as mentioned in tutorial 40. 
I was curious how this antenna was built, so I decided to disassemble it and tune it. Here you see antenna B disassembled. This is an aluminum tube. This copper tube is clamped to this copper cap, as you can see over here. This is the coax center conductor. This copper tube is soldered onto this center conductor. In case you are interested in the dimensions, I have created this picture. This aluminum tube is this aluminum tube. This copper cap is this copper cap. This copper tube is this tube. And this tube is this tube. Inside tube number one is the coax cable. This is the metallic shield of the coax cable, which is conductively attached to the copper cap and the aluminum tube. Copper tube 2 is conductively attached to the cap. This is a center conductor with a dielectric insulator. At the end is the center conductor. And this copper tube is soldered onto the center conductor. This copper tube. But I find this construction very strange. This center conductor is inside this tube. The radiation emitted by the center conductor is blocked by this copper tube. This tube is only 40 millimeters long, which is roughly one eighth the wavelength. A sleeve dipole antenna consists of two elements. Here is one element, and the second element is this one, starting from here all the way over here. I expected this to be a quarter wavelength long. And this should also be a quarter wavelength long. But this is not the case. I am not an antenna engineer, but I question whether this is a good antenna. If you are an antenna engineer, please correct me if I'm wrong. Leave a comment below. To tune antenna B to 868 MHz, I have completely removed tube number 2, and I have soldered a longer copper wire at the end of the center conductor. The length of this copper wire is limited by the antenna housing. This antenna must fit in the plastic housing. What I have created is one element starting from here to here, and the other element is from here to here. Again, antenna B only optimized for frequency 868 MHz. A copper wire soldered at the end of the center conductor. The total length is 74 mm. This copper wire has a diameter of 1.8 mm. I have removed the second copper tube. I have also applied a heat shrink tube, as you can see over here. Here you see the modified sleeve dipole antenna B, optimized for 868 MHz, attached to the antenna analyzer. And here are the measured antenna parameters. The fissoir is approximately 1.3. The impedance is approximately 44 ohms. And S11 is minus 18 dB. Here is the corresponding fissoir plot and the corresponding S11 plot and the corresponding impedance plot. The modified sleeve dipole antenna B performance is compared with sleeve dipole antenna C. For this test I'm using an endnote. More information about this endnote, see this tutorial. The endnote uses the MCCI LoRaWAN LMIC library, see this GitHub page, and the endnote uses the following sketch, see this link. This is the modified sleeve dipole antenna B attached to the end node, and this is the sleeve dipole antenna C attached to the same end node. In both cases, the end node is placed inside the building in front of a window. The end node is located at location A, facing east and south, at an altitude of 11 meters. I have not modified the end node transmission power when using both sleeve dipole antennas. As mentioned earlier, 
Both sleeve dipole antennas were positioned at location A, and in both cases, two messages per minute were transmitted. The log data can be found at this location. One or more gateways were able to receive my transmitted sensor data. See this Google map. And here are the results. These are all the gateways which were able to receive my transmitted data. These are the distances from gateway to end node. And as you can see, antenna B and C were able to transmit sensor data to this gateway. And the distance between end node and this gateway was 14.7 kilometers. But please be aware these asterisks means only one or few measurements. And it is also important to know that this gateway antenna is at an altitude of 45 meters. These are the gateway antenna altitudes and these are the average RSSI values. If you look at the results, you may notice there is no significant difference in the average RSSI values. When using the modified antenna B, it took 9 minutes to receive 15 messages. When using antenna C, which is my reference antenna, it took 11 and a half minutes to receive 15 messages. This difference is caused by the limited number of measurements. Once more measurements were taken, there was no significant difference in time. The Arduino sketch is configured to transmit 2 messages per minute. In a perfect situation, it should take 7.5 to 8 minutes to receive these 15 messages. This is a screenshot from the Things Network console. These are the results when using the modified sleeve dipole antenna B. It is a snapshot of the received sensor data. And these are the results when using the sleeve dipole antenna C. Looking at the results, I can conclude that both sleeve dipole antennas perform the same. If possible, connect the antenna directly to the end node without the use of a coax cable. Each connector or cable used is additional loss. Watch out, an antenna which looks like this does not necessarily mean it is a sleeve dipole antenna. A nice YouTube tutorial how to build your own sleeve dipole antenna. Watch this YouTube tutorial from Electronics No More. You get different results when the sleeve dipole antenna is folded or not. Here you see the antenna unfolded, and here you see the antenna folded. They are both the same antennas. As you can see, the antenna parameters differ. I recommend that you measure the antenna parameters in both states to verify that the antenna parameters are within their specification. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.